But it's amazing here that here they are, these Pharisees, and they're, they're not just walking out disgruntled in their hearts, but they're holding a council against him on how they might destroy him. So put it like this. He's walking away from a major adversity. All he did that day was, well, first of all, all he did was eat a meal. And then from there, he walks into the synagogue and he heals a man. All of a sudden, he's got these people wanting to kill him. Now, I don't know about you, but it would have been real easy to say, you know, I've done a good deed today. I healed a man. I believe I'm just going to call it a day, pack it in, go into the house, and just stop this journey. The problem is this, is that there was a lot more people that needed healing. There's a lot of others that needed reaching. And so Jesus could not afford, neither could the people, to allow adversity to stop him from serving the Father. If he stops when adversity comes, there's a lot of folks that don't need to get the help that they need. And can I say this to everybody in the building? If you and I stop when adversity comes, there'll be a lot of people that didn't get the help they needed. There'll be people that, that go unreached. So we got to learn, what did, the, what did the Savior do? How did the Savior keep serving in adversity? That's what I want to do right now is settle down in our text and really pull out the, the points or truths about that very idea. First of all, number one, in verse 15, if we could get the fans on, that would be a blessing. The first thing Jesus teaches us in serving in adversity is this. He put distance between himself and the problem. Watch this. In verse 15, the Bible says, but when Jesus knew it, knew what? About the adversity, about the counsel to kill him or to call him into question. The Bible says he withdrew himself from thence. That is the first thing that we discover about how Jesus served in adversity. We see him walking away from the trouble. Now, now listen to me closely. Time out. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean there's not a time to stand and fight. There is. He does that at the end of his ministry. In Matthew 23, when he's getting ready to go to the cross, he has that scathing message about the Pharisees in the temple. I mean, he blisters their backside. But this is toward the front of his ministry. And can I say this? If Jesus stops right now and goes into endless debates with these people, he can spend the next three years doing just that, debating them. And then he's not going to get near accomplish what God has for him to accomplish. So here's what he does. He puts distance between himself and the problem. Here's what you and I have got to do. We have got to try to understand when to fight and when to walk away. With so much adversity in the world, with so much adversity sometimes in the church, you've got to pick your battles wisely. You've got to decide what hill you're going to die on. You got to decide what things are worth fighting about or fighting over. And I want to say this right here. If he would have allowed those Pharisees, they would have tied him up and wasted his time with endless quarrels and debates for the majority of his ministry. And in the meantime, he would have got absolutely nothing done for God. And can I say this? We're living in a day and time where it's a lot easier just to stay swirled in the adversity than it is sometimes to just put distance between yourself and it. Amen. 